Recently, I've been in the city of Gdansk, and as a history channel, you can assume that I am quite interested in the history of the city and the historical sites therein. And while places like the Fontana Neptuna and the Basilica get lots of the attention, I was more drawn to other parts of the city. As someone who was really into military history, you can imagine my delight when I stumbled upon some medieval defensive walls that I had no idea even existed. And I kept following the walls, and in the process I accidentally retraced the border of the original main city. Fortunately for us, many elements of the historic fortifications at Gdansk still exist, so we're going to pilot this new series, Retracing History, Episode 1, The Guardians of Gdansk. So to start, here's a map of the defensive structures in and around the main city of Gdansk that still exist today. And here's a rough map of what existed historically. As you can see, a lot of it is no longer there, big surprise, but there's still lots to see if you're interested, especially around the main center and south of the city. Let's do a quick rundown of the history of the city and its fortifications, and then from there we can go on point by point to the surviving examples. Gdańsk has had settlement for millennia, but the first group to settle here that we know much about is the Pomeranians, who used the city's location to exploit the trade coming to and from the Baltic to the south into Poland. The Pomeranians were relatively sparsely populated, and at its peak, Pomeranian Gdańsk may have been home to a thousand people. The defenses were likely a Ma and Bailey style, with a main keep along the westward bend of the Motwowa River. The walls were likely a mix of earthworks and wooden ramparts. Pomerania started to be threatened by Poland in the mid-10th century, and the Poles finally fully conquered the region permanently in the early 1100s. With this, the city began to urbanize and the population expanded. However, Poland fragmented into various semi-autonomous duchies not long after, and the region, now called Pomerelia, was one of these realms, sometimes at odds with the main Polish governance. It's during this time that some brick structures were likely built, and the population continued to flourish with an influx of German migrants who brought with them guilds and business. But pretty much nothing to this point survives today, and that's because in 1308, when the city was embroiled in conflict with the neighboring Brandenburgs, the Teutonic Order came to liberate the city at the behest of the Pomeranian Duke. But instead of being friendly, the knights decided to take Pomerelia for themselves, massacre the inhabitants, and destroy much of the city. Fortunately, the knights still needed Gdańsk, and things were built back not long after on a scale not yet seen, and it's here that the earliest surviving fortifications were built. The first of these was the Corner Tower, which was erected in 1343 at the corner of the new main city center, which was south. This first wave of construction in the mid to late 14th century is when most of the medieval fortifications we see today were built. Fortifications at this time were made of brick, and the walls themselves would range in height from shorter to a person to almost 30 feet tall. Some parts had two sets of walls as well. The walls tended to be approximately a meter thick, either filled with brick or rubble. The towers of this time were generally rectangular, although some were circular, and most of these towers were around 30 to 40 feet tall. Moats around the main city area were made as well, although the history of these is less clear. In the mid to late 1400s, even more construction took place, this time expanding fortifications to the suburbs in the south, as well as the old town in the north. Towers started to take more of a circular shape and get a little taller, in an attempt to better withstand cannon fire and house guns for themselves. Many gates along the Motuava River sprung up or were modernized, including the famous Crane Gate in 1444. Like all medieval cities, the development of fortifications stopped or reversed in the 1500s, when cannons generally rendered the long, flat walls around cities useless. While a couple additions were made, mostly expanding outward or renovating things to a more modern style, much of the actual ramparts were destroyed. To this day, no fortifications exist in the Old Town District, and only two from the Old Suburbs survive. 
In their place were residential buildings, although many older fortifications, especially towers, were also used as powder magazines on account of their thicker walls. Gdańsk, of course, uh, you know, still existed, and starting in the late 16th century, more modern Dutch-style fortifications were built on the outskirts of the city, moting it in from all directions. These bastions of pentagonal shape were generally made from earth, but they had slanted brick walls and sometimes terracing, helping to deflect cannon fire. Tunnels inside as well as ramps to move up and down the bastions were used as well. Floodgates were added in the early 17th century to help moderate the water levels, and at times could even be used to flood the plains surrounding the city as far as a mile away. After the 1600s, further development of fortifications became somewhat fruitless, and it is at this point that the defensive structures mostly stopped being developed. Over the centuries, especially with the city falling under German occupation in 1772 with the first partition of Poland, these structures would be destroyed or changed. It's also worth noting that Gdańsk was renamed to Danzig at this time, but since the city had always had a sizable German population, the name Danzig has existed long before this as well, which is worth keeping in mind when you're trying to do research on the history of the city. The late 1800s saw the deconstruction of the bastion defenses to the north, west, and most of the east, Although the 17th century fortifications in the south are eminently obvious today, especially when just looking at a map of the city. World War II decimated Gdańsk, and little of the city, about 5%, survived destruction from the Germans and Soviets. After the war, many of the historical structures, including fortifications, were rebuilt, although attempts were made by the city planners to build them up in a more historically accurate, way, rather than their transformed states before the war, largely in a bid to de-Germanize the city. So there's our brief overview of the history of the fortifications of Gdańsk. Now let's do a little sightseeing tour of the fortifications with a map and all. This will be split into three main parts, starting with the main defenses around the town, then the peripheral defenses from slightly later, and lastly the early modern defenses in the outer ring. Starting where I accidentally began my journey down this rabbit hole, let's go to the northeast corner of the main town. Also, just so we're all clear, Historic Gdańsk is split into the main town, which is where most of the stuff is, Old Town in the north, and the suburbs in the south. Right by the Moltawava River, we see a brick turret known as the Swan Tower, or a Basta Wabecz in Polish. This tower was erected in the late 1400s, although it's likely a tower already existed here before then as well. Moving west across the street, we'll notice a length of brick wall about 50 yards long and 20 feet tall, although it shrinks later on. Looking here, we can see its thickness, how the ramparts were structured, and of course the different heights of the wall. As not far off, the wall drops to about 10 feet tall before being interrupted by a modern building. This part of the defenses historically would have housed some gates and towers, which are gone now, including the interestingly named Executioner's Gate. It briefly picks up again before resuming in full force for over 100 meters. Here the wall reaches heights of over 30 feet, and also is interrupted by fencing. After this is another block before our next landmark, the Jacek Tower. Built around 1400, this 36 meter tall structure is the second tallest building in the chain. On the edge of a park, the tower is right next to another length of wall, which connects to our first rectangular building, the Porneuge or Jamorjou Tower. Here, the wall drops to maybe 2 meters tall and stops short of our first gate, known historically as the Wide Gate, as this tower flanked one end of the Sheroka Street that bisects the main town and terminates almost 500 meters away at the Crane Gate. You may notice when looking at this building that it's connected to a bar, and on the other side of this bar lies the Lantern Tower. The Lantern Tower was open in the back originally, and was converted to a residential building for a while until it was returned to its former state after the war. 
After some more tall wall and another interruption, we see a stumpier tower known as the Straw, or the Thatch Tower, as well as the Coal Market Fortification, because that's where the coal market was, surprise surprise. While small, the walls of the tower were quite thick at about 4 meters. You can also notice how the tower is connected to the neighboring building, which was the Armory, with an arch showing how over time the walls were replaced with buildings. Some more wall and park, and then we get to the Golden Gate, but keep in mind that the current facade, to the degree that I was able to actually film it because it's under construction, is from a later century. The Golden Gate was one end of the famous Dwulga Street, which houses the main square of the city and the town hall. Historically, a moat ran between the gate and the tallest tower yet, the Prison Tower. Originally on an island in between a double moat, prison tower, well, housed prisoners, and connected to another structure across the outer moat. Today it hosts the Amber Museum of Gdańsk. Just west of this is the High Gate, now a standalone arch, but this was made much later than the prison complex in 1588. Moving south, we come to the oldest tower in Gdańsk, the Corner Tower, named for its strange shape and position on the southwest corner of the main city. Along with the neighboring Schultz Tower and named for an activist who fought for its preservation, the Corner Tower was open-backed and so was the last in the trio, the Brewery Tower, guess where that name came from, but the latter is now sealed. All three of these are now part of one building, which itself is connected to a smaller medieval wall. Here we can see the two layers of walling only a few feet apart, although little is left of them now. The wall picks up for three shorter lengths as well, but the south end of the city is the most devoid of these structures. At the southeast corner is the simple Anchorer's Gate, small like the Straw Tower but rectangular in shape. From here we move north down what are known as the Water Gates, since they're on the river. First is the Cow Gate, which looks kind of like a house with an arch through it. Also keep in mind that most of these gates were named for what they were next to at the time. Bread market, you know, granary, bread gate. Then we come to the green gate, my personal favorite, and the widest and grandest of these gates. This, unlike the other structures, was actually made in 1571, much later, although a gate here did exist earlier as well. A series of smaller gates follow that, starting with the Chlebnitsa or Bread Gate featuring a northern turret and named for its proximity to the Granary Island, then the slightly more impressive St. Mary Gate named for its road leading right to the Basilica. The Holy Spirit Gate is now actually a restaurant, but you can still see the archway. And then we get to the Crane Gate, which, you guessed it, gets its name from the massive wooden crane it houses. Sadly, as of the making of this video, the gate is closed for construction, so I can't get great footage of it, but it is easily the most imposing structure on the waterfront with large brick turrets and the eye-catching dark wooden crane, which was made in 1444, as we said, although another crane existed in this spot earlier as well. The Meek St. John's Gate, named for its proximity to the church of the same name, and finally the turreted Stareg Niarska, or market gate, and the fortifications of the old town. Notice that there are no walls next to the river. Now let's look at all the structures of other parts of the city, starting, funnily enough, just past the Swan Tower. You see, another tower stood where the Swan Tower currently sits, and that's because right here, on the eastward bend of the river, there used to be a castle. We won't get into too much detail here, but when the Teutonic Knights took the city in the 1300s, they built a castle to defend it and corral the city's unruly populace. It was relatively tame as far as Teutonic castles go. They built some of the best castles in Europe, with large moats being its most impressive feature. But in 1454, a bunch of Prussian and Polish people in the Teutonic territories rebelled during what is known as the Thirteen Years' War, and the Gdańsk Knights surrendered without a fight. To make sure the Knights could never come back and control the town with impunity, the town's people destroyed the castle. Today, only a short length of brick wall, as well as a five-story residential building, which would have been one of the castle's rectangular turrets, exists today. Moving across the Moltova, down to the east side of the Granary Island, 
we see the Stagievna Gate. Built in 1519, it consists of a tall turret and a small side complex with an arched gate running between the two. Today, the former houses a wax museum, while the latter hosts a currency exchange. Then we move south into the old suburbs of Gdańsk. Only a handful of medieval or renaissance structures remain here, and the general touristy atmosphere quickly dissipates. As the splendor of the city surrenders to a more derelict environment, we see the southernmost defenses of the old suburb. In the middle of a cobblestone roundabout is the White Tower, getting its name from, well, its white color. Historically, this flanked the southernmost gate of medieval Gdańsk, and just a block over, we see the ruins of the Zhrebim Tower, also funnily enough translated as the Trump Tower. This structure actually survived World War II, but started to fall into ruin in the 70s and 80s. Today, you can see a bit of tilt to it, as well as some of the internal structure of the turret. Finally, let's look at the early modern defenses of Gdańsk. While on a map, these are easily visible as a jagged artificial moat ringing the south of the city, on the ground they're not quite so impressive, especially because they're mostly covered in dirt and grass. We can start with this rise in the city, running from near the White Tower, about 100 yards to the south. I haven't really seen this marked on any maps, but it is a weird ridge in an almost flat city. And on its southern edge, you can see some remnants of terraced walls, although they're not brick, they're of stone. To top it off, it looks like this matches where a smaller internal wall ran behind the main bastions. Not very pretty, or even historically verifiable yet, but you can get on top of this on its northwest end and get a good view of the White Tower. Getting to the historically recognized sites, we come to the St. Gertrude Bastion. St. Gertrude was made from the late 1500s to the beginning of the 1600s, and it consisted of two terraces to form a pentagonal structure overlooking the outer moat. The ground level, as we see, is also technically the first level of terracing, and you can see the bricks lining the shore and elevating it a few feet from the water. The second, technically third, terrace acted more like a wall rather than a level unto itself and was probably slanted from the back as well. Earth and brick were the primary materials of construction. This basic structure goes for all of the surviving bastions. During World War II, St. Gertrude was used as a morgue and as a bomb shelter, and its internal structure is the best preserved of any of the bastions. Today, the only sign that this was man-made, aside from its shape obviously, are some brick embankments on the waterline and some chimneys. Or air ducts, I'm not sure exactly what they are. Next to Gertrude is the Lowlands Gate, which, while admittedly not so impressive, serves as the southernmost gate of Gdańsk, which likely made it the most common for those coming to the city from other parts of Poland. Next to this is the remnants of the Railway Gate, which is the latest of the fortifications and was actually added in the 1850s by the Prussians to allow for trains to enter the city. Today, all that survives are some brick defensive walls flanking the land bridge south with the odd short turret thrown in. Then we have the Zuber or Bison Bastion. Zuber is the tallest of the bastions and in terms of shape, most recognizably pentagonal. It was built in the 1620s along with the rest of the surviving bastions, and they are mostly named for animals. Further, when I was there, apparently someone was digging around, and in the hole I was able to see that the original brick, either forming the wall or part of the internal structure, was about a foot down. Getting to the most interesting part of the south is the Camiena Sluice. This, also finished in the 1620s, serves as a way to manage the water level of the moat around Gdańsk and consists of two pig-eared islands that come down connected by two stone walls to a main floodgate into the city. By connecting the floodgate in the wall to the flow of the Moldova River running north, along with four turrets known as the Four Virgins for defense, the sluice could modulate the amount of water flowing north into the city. 
By restricting it, the moat will have overflowed to the sides to fill up the moat, which had floodgates in the north to further help modulation. In times of siege, these gates could be closed as well, forcing the river to overflow into the plains to the south and east of the city for as far as a mile. We know that this was done at least once when Napoleon's troops besieged the city in 1807. In a battle map, as well as a painting from a little later, we can see that the southeast plains of Gdansk, at the time called Danzig, were flooded. While the city ultimately fell, the flooding still prevented attack from that part of the city, forcing the French to leverage the north bank of the Vistula. The trick, this trick was likely used on other occasions against the Swedes, Russians, and Prussians throughout the 17th and 18th centuries. Moving on, we have the Vilk or Wolf Bastion, only consisting of one extra level above the base terrace, but the pentagonal shape remains, and so does the steep, obviously man-made slope. Next is the Wiskok Bastion, then Bear or Mish Bastion, and finally the Krolik or Rabbit Bastion. All of the bastions in the south are in a park with nice walking paths along the moat, so I'd recommend this area to get away from the bustle of the main town, although the Zubar Bastion seemed to have been under construction on its north base, so we'll see what happens with that. A couple more sharp turns in the waterway indicate where a couple of other bastions were historically, but little of the architectural structures or earthworks remain, and the rest of the bastion structures seem to have been destroyed in the late 1800s under the Germans in order to make space for the expanding city. Doing some research, it seems like the lower of these was the Wildcat Bastion, and the northernmost may have been the Lion Bastion. Moving further up, we actually come to another gate, the Zuavska Gate. Like the Lowland Gate, this structure is relatively unimpressive and looks like it was built in Minecraft, but it marked the eastern entrance of the city. Today it serves as a glorified median, living on its own little island of grass. This gate, however, is the final gate in what I informally call the Dwuga Line, running through the Highland, Prison, Golden, Green, Stagyevna, and Zuavska Gates, as well as the main city square. To the north of the city, Google Maps shows some excavation of the hospital sluice system which would have helped to manage the water, but that is currently under a new building. And as a bonus for you guys, in the east, two more bastions remain, and both were actually discovered relatively recently. One is Bastion Kot, or Cat, and is still underground, built into the Shrodmieszcze train station with its discovery in 2015. The other, Bastion Viebego was actually rediscovered in 2018 as construction for a parking garage began. Here we have a good view of what the skeleton of the Bastion looked like with the room's thick and tall walls, a ramp leading to the top terrace, and there's also a smaller part of the structure a bit further south in the parking garage. So in short, what did we learn? The earliest surviving defensive structures of Gdańsk were built in the mid-1300s under rule of the Teutonic Order. Structures existed before this as well, but none seem to have survived, at least to none that we've discovered yet. The main town is the home of most of the surviving structures, as the old town and suburbs had their defenses destroyed to make way for expansion. Many moats disappeared in this process as well. The early modern defenses exist as well further from the center of the city, mostly in the south, but often forgotten structures exist to the east and west of the city center as well, the easternmost of which have only been recently discovered and raise exciting possibilities for what may come in the future of the city's archaeology. And Gdańsk has the coolest parking garage in Poland. And there used to be a castle here, but it's pretty much gone. There are other fortifications around Gdańsk as well, but those are more so standalone places, like the Vishwushe Fortress to the north and the Gora Garadova to the immediate west, but those will get their own videos. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know if there's anything I missed. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more content, because YouTube doesn't like it every time I mention one of the world wars. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.